we are in the town of Yonava. Yonava was uh, occupied by Nazis at the very early days of the invasion into the Soviet Union. In 1941. And very soon the actions, Aktionen, started in Yonava against the Jews. They were concentrated in the so-called ghetto in the area of the military barracks. Uh, Jewish men were sent here to the forest Girale to dig a long trench, long and broad trench, and then they were killed here on the spot. In the early days of August, uh, 500 people, mostly men and uh, some women, were killed here. And later, in uh, the end of August, uh, the rest, almost all the rest of the Jews of Yonawa, were also uh, shot in these trenches. In the ghetto were left only about 200 Jewish women and children. Who were later on sent to other places uh, and killed there. Here is After the war, when the investigation, Soviet Investigation Commission found the, all the terrible places in Lithuania, here was erected a monument and the Soviet inscription said that here were murdered Soviet people or innocent victims of the fascism. The new stone says in Hebrew and in Yiddish and in Lithuanian about Jews who were killed here, the number of Jews, uh, 2100 Jews, uh, children, men and wi women and men, uh, and the dates that it happened uh, in August 1941. Now we want to light a candle in memory of those victims, dear victims of the Holocaust. Hi, we have just been on the memorial, on the Holocaust memorial in the forest near Yonava. Many people think that Lithuania is only about Holocaust and sad uh, parts of the Jewish history, but it is not exactly so. We learn a lot about the Jewish life before the Holocaust, the brilliant new Jewish communities that existed in Lithuania. We also show on our tours, on our virtual and on our regular tours, a lot of uh, Lithuanian history, Lithuanian culture and heritage and interesting sites. We speak about the professions that local people occupied here. So, in this episode about the town of Yonava, we'll split and I will go to find Jewish sites. And I will go to look, to go through the Christian or general sites. So, I will start from the Jewish neighborhood. And I'll go to the local museum. I'll go to see the synagogue. And I'll visit the church. After that, I'll go to see the study house. And I will visit the places connected to the modern history. I will go to the Jewish cemetery. This I want also to join you there. So we'll meet on the Jewish cemetery. Sure. We are at the local area museum of the city Yonava. But originally this building was built as a post office and it was built in the 19th century we know exactly 1833-35 and it was built because the location of Yonava city is very very important and very good it is close to the city big city Kovna uh, the main city of Kovna Gubernia, of the Kovna province, and it was on the way from St. Petersburg to Warsaw, one of the main ways from Russian capital, St. Petersburg, to Europe. This post office was arranged, was called the uh, horse post office, because here it was a station to change the horses, 
And here, through Yonava, all the uh, letters and all the parcels were sent on this way, on this uh, line axis from St. Petersburg to Warsaw. Another axis, because this was a crossroad, another axis was from Dvinsk, or today it is called Daugavpils, or Dinaburg in German, to Königsberg. Another, another direction, very important direction. So we suppose that the horses were held here in these two buildings on the sides, and this was the courtyard of the post office. And here, even it was famous that even the Tsar, Tsar, Nicholas I, with his family, once visited here, and there were arranged rooms for rest for the imperial, for this brilliant family. We are at the courtyard of the church after Saint Yaakov or Jacob. Here it's written in Lithuanian, Svantas Jakubas. And this church was built at the very end of the 18th century by the architect from Vilna, Laurina Stokogutsevichus, and his style, his architectural style was neoclassicism. Well, the same we can see in Vilna at the, at the main cathedral in the center of the city. We can see here also the church built in the classical style and uh, it has two, two towers for the bell, two bell towers, and it was built on the same place where stood once a wooden church that was that belonged to the family that, that belonged to the family of Kosakovsky. Kosakovsky noble, nobility family that they were owners of this settlement. And this settlement got the name of one of the sons of Kosakovsky, Jonas or John, and so the city got the name Yonava. So as I've told you, I will go to the Jewish side and I'm in the Jewish neighborhood. Kauna Street or Kauno in Lithuanian. Kauno 26 lived Burstein and Kauno 30 lived Goldschmidt. And by the end of Kauno Street, there were a lot of workshops and uh, small manufacturers and a lot of Jews owned these uh, uh, industrial facilities. Yonava is a crossroad city. It's located on the crossroad between east and west, north and south. And uh, it's uh, no um, wonder why Jews were so important here and occupied the uh, town of Yonava, because here were a lot of possibilities for commerce, for crafts, for making money and uh, doing mitzvah for the family. Uh, Yonava once was a wooden town but it was burned down many times, sometimes during war, sometimes just because fires happened in wooden houses which were heated by wood. So these brick houses were built in uh, 1800s, late 1800s or early 20th century. And all these houses on Kauna Street, or most of them belonged to the Jews. Jewish community of Yonava reached its peak by the end of 1800s. They were 92% of the total population and it's remained a high percentage. And at the eve of the Second World War, they were still 80% of the population. It's hard to imagine today in Lithuania, 80% of population of Yonava town was Jewish, which means that 80% of this town spoke Yiddish up until the Holocaust. Today, just for you to understand, there are no Jews in Yonava at all. We have to be grateful to the government which initiated, to the cultural, uh, to the Ministry of Culture which initiated preserving the heritage, the Jewish heritage. Here you can see the picture of the red synagogue, the building does not exist. The white synagogue, we will see the building soon. Uh, the Jewish street, the counter street and a group of uh, uh, students and teachers standing at the Yavne school in 1930 in Yonava. So the uh, ferry 
the, the, the small ferry connecting between the two shores of uh, uh, Neris River. Uh, cart and, and horse and buggy, totally Jewish business. Many Jews were horsemen and they used to take people from Yonaba to Kaunas and from Kaunas to Yonaba. Some explanation in English for travelers as well, mentioning the Kosakovsky, Dominik Kosakovsky, who was the local landlord and, and, and owner, actually the owner of the town, who gave the privilege to the Jewish people to settle in Yonova in 1750s. So this privilege was never taken away from them up until, of course, the Holocaust, which we put as a absolutely separate event in, in our history. So we are on the corner of uh, Vilnius and Sodo streets. We see the former synagogue building. In Yonova there were seven synagogues, three big ones and the rest were small and also there was a number of uh, study houses or prayer houses, uh, at, um, shtibel or, or kloys, depends in what Yiddish we speak. So this was the biggest synagogue. Uh, it remained in its authentic shape, but of course it uh, stopped to be used by the Jewish community uh, during the Holocaust. So everything is authentic except the color and the usage. So the, these two uh, parts of the synagogue, they were built in the same shape. And actually, uh, there were no special signs on the synagogue, no Star of David, no uh, Ten Commandments. Uh, Lithuanian Jews, they were not tended to decorate their synagogues like it was in Poland or in Ukraine. So. Uh, in the Soviet period, it was used for different purposes, including the bakery. And uh, now for quite a long period of time, it's an abandoned building and uh, nobody uses it. The biggest business in Yonova is the factory for fert fertilizers for the agriculture in Lithuania. Lithuania is an agricultural country. And here is the monument in honor and in memory of the founder of this factory that is called Azotas, Achema. Some period he was the prime minister of Lithuania. The little sign on this building says that it was a synagogue or a study house and today it's a regular shop. And I'm on the second Jewish street of Yonava. It's called Klaipeda. Klaipeda, it's a memel in Jewish tradition. So, you know, one synagogue is abandoned and this synagogue is used as a, a grocery shop. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Ulik. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. So was I'm... it interesting there? Yeah, it was very nice. Jewish streets, a synagogue. I've talked to children, uh, okay. local children. Very... How, was, how was the year? Very interesting. Very nice city and new buildings. And, uh, you know, it's really vibrant town here. Yeah. I see that here is a new built stadium. Yeah, it was not some 20 years ago, it wasn't. No, here. it's very new. I think right. they built it five or six years ago. Right. And what do you think? What is the place here? It was outside Yonava 50, 60 years ago. Here was nothing, none of this infrastructure. The only thing which was here was a Jewish cemetery on the Behind hill us. overlooking Yonava. So yeah. let's go. Let's go there. So the Jewish cemetery is on the hill next to the old city of Yonava. Very nice place, by the way, from here you yeah, can see the whole in the high old place. city. Here were a lot of stones. Uh, many of them were broken during the Second World War and afterwards by the Soviets. Yeah, yeah. I see that they are put on a very strict order symmetric way yeah yeah the uh, uh, not so long ago the cemetery was renovated after the, the independence uh, after the yeah after the last revolution and uh, they decided as they didn't know which stone belongs exactly to which grave so they decided to put them in in, in straight Lines. rows mm -hmm. uh, and to put them on concrete um, foundations yeah. so they would not sink into the ground exactly 
I would say that it's made very, very, very respectful. Yeah, maybe it's not very good for those who want to find the actual grape and the actual place. But at the same time, in many other places, there is, there nothing. is, there is nothing at all. all. Right. This valley is called Yoninu Slenis. Yoninu means St. John's Day. Lithuanians celebrate here the longest day and the shortest night of the year, which is in uh, June. Late June. All right. And this is a kind of uh, crossroad of different cultures. Pagan holiday, which got a Christian uh, appearance, St. John's Day. And uh, also just next to us is a Jewish cemetery, not far from us. It's a Jewish neighborhood. And uh, this shows the multicultural appearance of the city. Yeah, I visited the general places the church, the main church uh, of uh, St. Uh, Jacob and you? I was, I showed the synagogue and the Jewish street. I was in the, in the museum. So we tried our best, we did our best to show you the two different worlds of Yonava, the Jewish and the Lithuanian world. Uh, they are very different, but as it looks to us today in Yonava, they are very similar. Those who are interested more in details about the Jewish life of Yonava, we recommend to read the books of Grigory Kanovich, a Jewish writer that writes about his native city, Yonava, and the area about the Jews of Lithuania. He lives today in Israel, he is 91, and this is a very, very good fiction literature. Thank you for being with us on this virtual tour to Yonava. Thank you for being on our YouTube channel or Facebook page. Put like, send us comments uh, uh, or suggestions. This will help to bring you the best detailed content about the thing. See you in our next virtual tours around Lithuania. <laughs>